Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. Brother Thomas with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about the words of God. The words of God, beautiful indeed, wonderful. For those of us who are in Christ, we know the beauty of these words, the power of these words, his words, God's words, and they are sweet to us. David wrote in Psalm 119, in verse 103, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Yes, indeed they are. They truly are. And we share that because so many don't really read the scriptures and miss out on the blessing of such sweet words the very words of God himself shared with us. For the scriptures are God breathed. And the context here, of course, is God speaking to us. How sweet the words are that he speaks to us. And for us today in the body of Christ, the church, we have his word, the word of God, his words recorded in this word, <laughs> the written word of God. And so, sweeter than honey to my mouth, he says. And we say, beautiful indeed. Now, a few things about these words of his. They are powerful indeed. You should understand that, well, heaven and earth shall pass away, Jesus would say, his word will never pass away. His words will never pass away. Indeed, they are eternal and they are of great value to us. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew 25, 30, or 24, 35, 24, 35. And that makes for a very reliable, dependable, sure word of God in which we can trust and have confidence and know that what God has said to us in writing here is truth that will not change. God is consistent in that. He never breaks a promise. He fulfills every promise. What God says is, is. And with that level of confidence and trust in God, we have, all right. We can know God, to know him person, not just about him, and something we read in a book, but they, inter you know, we meet God in our salvation and we learn of him in his word. God doesn't just save us and then forget about us. God stays with us. His spirit dwells within us, guiding and helping us to understand and know the truth of his word. Wonderful indeed. Praise God. And one more thing about this before we begin to shift a little bit here, is Jesus had just presented a pretty hard word and many people didn't understand it. And many even began to turn away, go back. Many of the disciples, not of the 12, but of the multitude of disciples that had been following Jesus around, many of them turned back. They went back and stopped following him. And Jesus would ask the 12, will you leave me too? You gonna leave me? And therefore, will ye also go away? Peter's answer is beautiful. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. 
thou hast the words of eternal life. Not only do we get to know God, but comes the gift of eternal life to be with God, to know God, to be how wonderful it is. So sweeter than honey, the beautiful words of God. And they are indeed. Yes, indeed. For they reveal a holy and righteous God. They tell us of his works, his thoughts, which are so far above our thoughts. If he didn't tell them to us, we could never think of them because they're so far above us that he has to share them with us. <laughs> there has to be this word because otherwise we'd never be able to begin to search out the, the person of God without his giving us this beautiful word. Oh, and indeed. Now, something about these words, too, that we also should understand. As we find in Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, this is Jesus speaking, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. I'm not ashamed of this. I pray you are not, brothers and sisters out there, to be ashamed of his words, his truth. And truly not. There's nothing to be ashamed of. For his words are life. They are light and life. God's words. More precious than gold and silver. If you were to offer. All the gold and silver and precious stones there are on the face of the earth and all I would have to give you was this word and never read it again or not read it again in this lifetime I would turn you down because I know <laughs> couldn't go that long wouldn't want to go that long here is our joy here is our our hope Revealed Jesus Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory. The hope that God is God and will do what he says he will do. That what we see in this world, the hopelessness, the sin and the wickedness, the bondages of sin, there is an answer. There is an answer. It's Jesus Christ. And we learn of him and know of him. God's words. By God's words. Jesus would tell the Pharisees. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. But they are which testify of me. Speaking of the Old Testament. What we call the Old Testament. Even the Old Testament, God's words, they are which testify, they speak of Jesus. Certainly the new. And this word, this is a really powerful word, is the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, we read this in verses 12 and 13. A lot of people focus on verse 12, but 13 should be read with it because it really is one continuous thought. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, 
but all things are naked and opened unto, his, unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Sharper than any two-edged sword. There is no blunt side to his sword. It cuts both ways. It truly does cut both ways. And it pierces even to the most deepest inner parts of our being. Soul and spirit, joints and marrow, the spiritual side, the soul and spirit, to the very physical, joints and marrow. There is no part of us that God does not know and understand. He sifts and analyzes discerning even the very intents of our heart, the intent of our heart. Oh, brothers and sisters, that's something that we cannot do to another. We cannot really judge the intent of another person's heart. We can judge actions and certain responses and words, but the true intent of that person's heart that's pretty deep. <laughs> and so, God can. But God can. And God can reveal. It's a beautiful thing. There is an understanding this then that there is no place that we can run or hide from God. Wherever we go, God is. Whatever we think we've done in secret and kept there, God knows. Whatever sin you think you've hidden from God, and perhaps maybe you're afraid for God to ever find out because he won't love you anymore, all those kinds of crazy thoughts. Hmm? I know when you're thinking them, they don't sound crazy, but know this, God already knows them. Your secret sins are no secret to God. The bondage that you do not tell others about that you have and you kind of put out of your thinking when you share with the Lord in prayer or thought or study, God knows the bondage. Yes, he does. There are no secrets from God. For everything is laid naked and open before his eyes. He sees it all. He has seen it all and knows it all. To the Garden of Eden. As the Spirit of the Lord. The, the voice. I love the, when he uses that term. The voice of the Lord walking through the garden in the cool of the day. The voice of the Lord. Are we to suppose that the voice of the Lord didn't really know where Adam and Eve were? Or that when he asked them, what is this that thou hast done? That he didn't already know what they had done? Oh, he did. He surely did. It was Adam and Eve that needed to see and speak it forth and that they would know what they had done. Confess it. Speak it forth and confess it, get it out. And to God, because then we can know when the answer comes that it is of God. God is the answer. God always gives the right answer. And the answers we're really looking for come from God and God alone. Not from men, not from sowing fig leaves together, some lame action, no work that we can do, no cave that you can hide these things in, but confess them, get them out. 
just as someday every knee shall bow and every tongue, what? Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. When amen, words, the words of God, so valuable, so precious, so revealing, for in them we find salvation because they reveal Jesus Christ as the Savior. Jesus, who came and bled and died upon the cross, was buried and raised the third day, rose from the dead the third day, physical resurrection. His body died upon that cross. He was buried in the tomb to reflect that truth. And on the third day, he rose. Jesus is alive and ascended to the right hand of the Father. Where he is, that's where we're, we're going. We're followers of Jesus. Knowing amen. So the glory of God's words, beautiful. So beautiful and revealing. They help us so much. They bless us in so many ways. Uh, freedom. We find freedom, freedom from the law of sin and death, freedom to do that which is of God, holy, righteous, just, free to reject the temptations, free to speak forth in the name of Jesus. That all we do and all that we say be done in the name of Jesus. Free? Yes, free indeed. And we know it. Because God's word says it. And we believe it. And then we experience it. Yes. In word and in deed. So today, brothers and sisters, oh, with blessed assurance, know that there is nothing hidden that God does not know. And it will all be revealed. Go ahead and share it with him now. Confess it. Indeed. For he is just and willing to forgive us to, of our sin, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. May the chains of the bondages that hold be broken, broken to pieces, that you be free, free to serve the true and living God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all of your being, spirit, soul, and body, a body that is the temple of God, in the joy of the Lord. And folks out there, if you don't know Jesus today as your savior, his word, it declares, it will tell you the guidance and by the convicting work of the Holy Spirit. God's word. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and are in need of a savior. All, there's not one who is not. And that savior is Jesus Christ, whose blood and death have paid the price the sin that you know you've committed. Confess it all. 
and know that there is no secret place to hide that one thing or two or three that you do not do. Now give it all, all, surrender all, that Jesus might set you free, make you free. He's the one, it's all Jesus. Free that you might be free indeed. In Jesus' name, oh praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, folks out there, have a glorious, blessed, and beautiful day. Spend some time in God's word. Hearing the words, plural, the words of God. In Jesus' name, oh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen.